welcome everybody uh, to another episode of my live stream, my journey to the Trinity. And uh, for those of you who, uh, a couple of you, you know, I think I need to learn how to work this thing a little bit better. But because there are some of you who are uh, asking about what time we're going to start, I, th I thought I should come on and just explain that there was a um, there was a uh, a post on a uh, let me show it to you here. Yeah, I can show it to you. I got to show you. There was a post about Jesus, and uh, I responded to it because. Uh, and let me just show you what happened. And uh, just to kind of give you an idea why um, why I, I started this uh, uh, kind of uh, wannabe uh, <laughs> uh, live stream. Uh, you see, this is what it says. It says, Jesus said, if you call anyone a fool, you are in danger of hellfire. And then they say there's a contradiction here because uh, Jesus called the Pharisees fools in Matthew 23, 17. And he said, well, that's a contradiction. Well, my response was, uh, this is what I respond. I said, well, uh, see if I can make it bigger so you guys can see it. Yeah, I can make it bigger here. I said, well, he's God. <laughs> Jesus is God. And so when he says, when God says someone's a fool, he's God. He knows that person is a fool. God doesn't, um, you know, God, oh, <laughs> oh, Sam is on. <laughs> let's see. Let's see. Let's bring Sam on. Uh, you know. You know. I was. I was trying to. Uh, I was trying to get these guys to come on and to uh, to defend their position. Uh, anyway, when I did this, let me see. I'm going to, uh, dude. I'm, I'm, dude. Am I really this old? Or something. Let me. I want to invite Sam to come on with uh, with me. And uh, okay, Sam Shimon. I'm gonna send Sam an invitation, you guys. And uh, you know, but just to kind of give you an idea, what uh, was happening is that these guys were making this statement, and I said, "Hey, you know, he's God, and God knows who is." Uh, God knows who is uh, a fool. <laughs> and so, uh, you know, for Jesus, he's not doing it out of uh, like our petty vitriol. You know, he, he knows exactly. He knows exactly um, the person and he knows what their heart is like. So, um, hey, Sam, I sent you an invite at Sam Shimon on Facebook. And I also sent you uh, an invite here if you'd like to uh, come on. Just go ahead. Um, I went ahead and sent it to you here on the uh, on the live stream itself. So uh, if you'd like to come on, come on. It'd be great to have you. You know, um, but, it, you know, what happened is that, um, okay, here's Sam. Hey, Sam, how are hey. you, man? Hey, bro. Hey, man, I just made it. Uh, <laughs> Alhamdulillah, salam. <laughs> thank you, Lord Jesus, for traveling overseas, and thank you, Lord Jesus, for brothers like you, and thank you for allowing me to stay at your place. I just got in like 30 minutes ago. Oh, good timing, man. Yeah. yeah glory to the trying God. And I ask the Lord Jesus to bless you and bless me, fill us with the Spirit. Hallelujah. To interpret the Word perfectly without error, with the wisdom from the Holy Spirit, and guide us into all truth, and use you and I to magnify Jesus Christ and love Jesus and obey Jesus and bless the people of God. In Jesus' name, Holy Spirit, take over this session, take over our lives, because it is you that works through us to glorify Jesus, and we trust in you in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, it, it's interesting that they bring that up, brother. If you read it very carefully, if you go back, uh -huh. and you're right. Jesus is God. As God, <clears throat> he has every right to call someone a fool because God knows the state of a person, whether right. a person is truly of the devil, a fool, and worthy of rebuke and judgment. But it's actually a little more deeper than that as well. If you go to Matthew 5, brother, read 21, 22 for me. Matthew 5, 21 to 22. Yeah, because they didn't read carefully. Because <clears throat> this is an old argument. And just to help people understand, most of these objections that the Muslims bring up, we dealt with 
in the late 90s and early 2000s. Just before you read it, let me explain pe to people that before YouTube, before Facebook, Facebook Live, <clears throat> the way Christians and Muslims would debate online is through written responses. So I started doing full-time ministry by the grace of God in 1999 for Answering Islam. So mm -hmm. you can go to answeringislam.info because there are certain countries where you can't access the site if you do answering-islam.org. They blocked it. But glory to Jesus, they haven't blocked the other URLs, answeringislam.info. So what we would do is we'd go back and forth written responses. This is an old objection they've already responded to ages ago. So I want to encourage my brothers and sisters in Jesus, make some time to read the articles. You will find meat, gold, silver in these articles by the grace of God. If you take some time to read, a lot of people don't like to read anymore, and I don't blame you, but you're missing out so much information that will bless you, strengthen you, and sharpen you to glorify Christ and refute these objections. So go to answeringislam.info. Especially okay. check out the polemic rebuttal section where we're going back and forth with Muslims. They'd write a response, we'd respond. They'd respond, we would respond. So they're lengthy but worth the time to study because you get meat. We quote scholars, we quote commentaries, we quote, we quote <clears throat> you know, scientific you know, facts and so on and so forth. Now, with that said, brother, read carefully what our Lord says. Uh, 21 to 22? Yeah, and it's answering, A N. Yeah. S W. You you messed the W, brother. I know how you are. You just don't like to. You want to be like the Quran and misspell like the Quran does. Uh, yeah, but that. Dot info. Yeah. Dot info. No. Yeah. What you did is you didn't put the W after the S. It's yeah. answering in Islam. Dot info. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's okay, man. You're imitating the Quran. It's okay, bro. Uh, okay. You have heard that it was said to those of old, "You shall not murder," and whoever murders will be liable to judgment. But I say unto you that everyone who is angry at his brother, pay attention, brother, uh, will be liable to judgment. Whoever insults his brother will be liable to the council. Whoever says you fool will be liable to hellfire. The Jesus hell didn't say, Jesus did not say, brother, that you can't call anyone a fool. He said you cannot call a brother a fool. Or insult a brother. Now, who is your brother? Matthew chapter 12, verses 46 to 50. Matthew 12, 46 to 50? Yes. Okay. Hey, get out of here, bro. Get out of here, buddy. The dog wants to be fed. <laughs> oh. Matthew 12, 46 to 50. Watch here. Okay. Just like yeah, you, can just, you can make it very easy for yourself by doing Matthew 12, colon, 46-50. That will be the easiest way to get it. Okay. I got this. Um, I know I'm a little bit slow. I'm just No, no. Uh, that's for you, for your benefit. Anytime you look at a passage on Bible Gateway, you just put in Matthew, let's say ch number 12, colon, 46-50. It'll take you right there. Okay. That will be easier for you that will spend, you know. We'll give you more time. Okay. What's up, buddy? Uh -oh. I was going to take a shot at the Muslims, but I can't. They're going to get offended. So anyway. Okay. All right. He will. Okay. While he was still speaking to the people, behold, his mother and brother stood outside asking to speak with him. But he replied to the man who told him, who is my mother and who are my brothers? And stretching out his hand toward his disciples, he said, Here are my mother and my brothers. Whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Now, did the Pharisees do the will of the, uh, God the Father? No. So were they Jesus' brothers? No. So how did Jesus contradict himself? Oh, okay. Wow, that's a good point. Yes. How does Jesus contradict himself when he's dealing with Pharisees, scribes, Sadducees, whom he says are brood of vipers, whitewashed sepulchres, because they oppose God, pervert his word, and want to condemn Jesus to death. Because the will of the Father is told us in Matthew 17, verse 5. Matthew 17, verse 5. Now go Matthew 17, colon 5. We'll take you right there. 
Matthew. The will of the Father. 17, 5. Okay. Say it took you right there. Okay. And while he was still speaking, a bright cloud covered them. And a voice from the cloud said, This is my son whom I love. With him I am well pleased. Listen to him. Okay, so what's the will of the Father? That we listen to the Son. <laughs> Did the Pharisees listen to the Son? No. Nope. So they are not his brothers? Yes. And Jesus said, Don't call a brother who truly is your brother, who does mm -hmm. the will of the Father by believing in Jesus, a fool or insult him. So how is Jesus contradicting himself? Wow, yeah. That's true, man. Thank you for thanks for uh, for uh, going into the depths of that. And uh, yeah, and, and I just want to tell everybody, I benefit so much from the answering Islam. Everything that they do is it's easy to read. It's understandable. It's right to the point. You're not wasting your time reading a bunch of uh, empty mumbo jumbo. So, you know, go there and, you know. And I know like one time I had somebody who uh, who was talking about, well, uh, you know, Jeremiah says that Allah deceived them because, you know, they're trying to defend about the Makir and Khir and Makirin and everything. And I went to answering Islam and there were some very good, argu solid arguments there about how to answer that. So, uh, yeah. In so, fact, I put an article called, "Is uh, Does Yahweh Really Deceive? Because I got sick of Muslims twisting scripture. But I just gave you a link because I'm not a mod, so I can't post it in your comment section. But I sent you a link here in private. Oh, okay. And in that, that link, I address a similar objection raised by a Muslim who's now, I don't know if he passed away because he was quite old when we used to debate him. But um, there, I deal with this issue in depth. Okay. So that was their only objection? That's kind of... That was kind of weak on their part. This all they had? Uh, well, you know what happened is that, you know, I put down that he's got him. Then I went explained a little bit how he knows. And uh, and then there are two guys responded and tell me, uh, you know, they one of them said, um, yeah, you know, he said, he says, anyways, can we do some? Oh, okay, wait a second. Let me tell you what they said. Yeah. Guys are like from from Africa. Yeah. I think. Sorry. sorry. Go ahead, brother. I was just closing the door because my cat came in. You got dogs, I got a cat. <laughs> he says, wow, I can see how the Christians are trying to twist things. Some are actually going out of track like expected. I expect one more thing. Have experienced from Christians. Be giving another definition for the first fool and the second one. Uh, whatever the heck that, that means. That sounds just as coherent as the Quran. <laughs> right, which means it's incoherent, right? Uh, or, or, yeah, looks like they, you know, but, you know, one thing that I was trying to say was that, you know, like even Paul, he calls, he said to the Galatians, oh, foolish Galatians. Yep. That, there that's is, in my article, by the way. I'm sorry? That's in my article. Oh, that's that in there. Right there. That article, that link I sent you, that was a claim by a Muslim saying how Paul contradicts Jesus by calling people fools. If you actually go to my article, this again shows how ignorant people are. You'll see that there is no contradiction. It's in that article because if you look, the, the Bible is written, the New Testament, let me be more specific. The New Testament is written in Greek. If you actually see what the Greek word is for fool in Matthew 5.22, it's more, where we get more, it's from more, it's more, from moros, where we get moron. Oh. You know that? It's in the article. I gave it to you. So if you want to click on it, you can even bring it up on screen if you can. I don't know if you – I can't do that feature. I don't know how to do it. But the Greek word in Matthew 5.22, more, comes from moros, where we get the word moron. So if I were to capture the point of Jesus, Jesus is saying, don't call anyone a moron. But in Galatians 3, verse 1, Paul doesn't use the word moros. He uses the word ano, anoitoi. It's, it's a completely different word. Wow. I know it, so there's not even a contradiction if you look at the original Greek. Mm. Because Paul doesn't call them moros, moron. He uses another word, anoitos. And there, it's not, oh, you fool, you idiot. It's like, you know, guys, come on. How, how slow are you in not getting the point already? Yeah. It's not meant to be the way <clears throat> the word moron 
is intended to be used, like belittling. Here it's all this time and you're still not getting it. You've been given the gospel. You've seen miracles. God has shown you the truth. And you're that slow in seeing that you're being deceived by these false apostles. It's Paul's point is different. In Matthew 5, it's belittling someone. And, and the context of Galatians, it's Paul rebuking Christians for falling for a false gospel that will now sever them from Christ. One is an insult. The other is out of concern. Mm. Wow. Yeah, it's yeah. not even the same word in Greek. Yeah. Well, you know, all of these arguments that they give are, are so lame, you know, and uh, they're so easily argued. But and I usually I usually don't respond to them. But I just had a few seconds today. So I decided, oh, God, I'm still going to just put a little thing in here. You know, he is God. And what happened is that these other guys responded to what I said. You know, and so I thought, OK, well, let, let's bring them on. And so I sent them invitations to come uh, to come do a debate with me. And they uh, neither of them has responded. So I'm still waiting. They may come on. One of them told me he has to go to sleep. But <laughs> oh, well, sleep is more important than defending Allah and his messenger. Huh? Uh, <laughs> yeah. So there, in that article, I give the Greek words and the lexical meanings, and you'll see that what Jesus is saying is one thing, and what Paul is doing is another. And even Jesus says to the two on the road, "Oh, you foolish and slow at heart, to believe all that the prophets have spoken." So that it, the point is different in the way Jesus is using it, and Paul is using it from Jesus's point in Matthew five twenty two. Matthew 5, 22 is just out of anger and rage. You just insult the brother. Call him stupid, idiot. You, mm -hmm. you know. Whereas yeah. in these other passages, the term is not used to simply degrade and insult because you're angry towards your brother because he did something against you, let's say. It's more of a rebuke like you're still not getting the point. How slow are you in comprehending what the prophets have said or what the apostles are preached and what saves you. Come on, guys. Why are you falling for deceit and trickery? See, that's a different point. Yes. Well, you know, it's like, uh, you know, I think that's one of the main things is that one is just to degrade the person, to demean yeah. the person, whereas one is actually to tell a person, hey, you are in a, in a, in a dangerous position right now for yourself the way you're thinking. You're thinking about this is wrong. And the Bible talks about the whole book of Proverbs is about fool, fools and folly, you know? Yeah. So it, they, it's a real situation, a real condition. And uh, But I, I wanna thank you for this wonderful gift you left for me, yep. these three tracks. But I, 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 since I got you here, I, I, if you don't mind, I'd like you to respond. I, I read a little bit about them. One of them is about Muhammad, I mean, Muhammad, and one of them is about Jesus. And I thought, oh, you yeah. know what, this, this is the one. Direction. This is the one that I, I, I would really need to respond to because this is the blasphemy track. This is yeah. so full of blasphemy. It's so deceptive. It's so satanic. And people are picking them up and, oh, you believe in Jesus too? Oh, okay. I believe in Jesus. And so uh, anyway, I'd like you to just respond to a couple yeah, we of- we can respond to that. In fact, you, you can get those tracks anytime there's a Muslim booth set up anywhere, like with, what's his name, Uthman, Ibn Fibn Farouk in Balboa Park in San Diego. He's, he has those tracks. So you guys, if you find a Muslim booth, <clears throat> these tracks are found all across the board. It, it's, it's like they go to the same Islamic publishing company and get the same tracks and distribute the same tracks. Because those same tracks that I left at Steve's house, and the Lord bless him for his graciousness in putting me up, are also the same tracks that Uthman distributes in Balboa Park, also the same tracks that I found elsewhere. So <clears throat> it's it's good that we go through those tracks. In fact, if you didn't watch it already, about three weeks ago, was it? David Wood went up again to, to Balboa Park to confront Uthman on one of the tracks. He oh, actually yeah. brought one of my tracks. He goes, okay, can we discuss some of the things that this track says? Yeah, And you can watch that discussion. So I do think it's important as Christians, we take the tracks and go through them. Yeah. So I think this is a great idea. Now, I don't have my, a copy of that track with me, so you're going to have to read some of the statements yeah. if you want to address it. Well, I, you know, I'm just going to read like the main point, 
and then read the first paragraph just so that you can see the bullshit. I mean, uh, the stuff that it says. Be careful, dude. You're so, alive. People are going to hear you say, chef. I know. You know what? I said it on purpose. And I said it with heart and emotion and commitment. Just say bull crap, man, or, you know, you bull chef. Chef is better. Okay. Sorry. I, I, I did not say the T. I did not say the T when I said it, but. <laughs> But yeah, anyway, yeah, yeah. let me. I just chat myself, but go ahead. Okay. okay. All right. Now, this is, is, you know, this beautiful track that they give to Christians. We believe in Jesus. We love Jesus. We love Jesus more than you do. And, uh, and uh, here, let's look at the very first thing that they said Jesus, the prophet of God. Okay. Wow. Jesus is a figure who is loved and revered by billions of people in the world over. Yet, there is much confusion surrounding the status of this colossal personality. Muslims and Christians both hold Jesus in high regard. I just want to stop right there. Muslims, you do not hold Jesus in high regard. You do not. Hold Jesus in high regard. He's God. You bring him way down. You do not hold him in high regard. Exactly. Okay. Um, and, and, but view him in different ways. Can you talk a little bit, Sam, about are the different ways we view him? Yeah. Now, the problem is most Muslims do not even accurately represent what the Quran teaches about Jesus. <clears throat> Because either they are misinterpreting the Quran through later Islamic tradition or they're ignorant of the Quran. So <clears throat> the problem when I talk about the differences in the Christian view of Jesus <clears throat> with the Islamic view of Jesus, we have to be careful. And I'm not trying to belabor the point, but I want to use these sessions to educate all of us. I pray the Holy Spirit helps me, not just you, but all of us to go deeper into the word. And then give us the power to love the word and obey it. Because Jesus wants us to obey him to show we love him. And I, in Jesus' name, I pray I'm, I'm more than just someone who speaks, but a doer of the word. And I pray that for Steve and all of us. Because to know a lot and to feel act upon it, greater our judgment. May the Lord Jesus have mercy on us. Even when you talk about the differences between Christianity and Islam, my brothers and sisters in Christ, it is a sad state of affairs that Christianity is fragmented. So you have groups that claim to be Christian that are not, that are heretics and pervert the Bible. For example, the Muslims look to Jehovah's Witnesses as being Christians and Mormons as being Christians. We don't consider them to be Christians, but heretics. So when I talk about the Christian view of Jesus, I'm talking about the accurate interpretation of the Bible, correctly interpreting the Bible, to correctly understand who the Jesus of the Bible is, who is the Christ of history. The Christ of the Bible is the historical Jesus. So if you look at the history of the church, the disciples of the apostles and their heirs, <clears throat> the belief of the church on the basis of the accurate reading of the Bible is that Jesus is God in the flesh, the eternal son of the father, the eternal companion of the Holy Spirit. So he's not the father, he's not the spirit, He's not the first creation of the Father. He's the eternal Son who's one with the Father and the Spirit in essence, and he became man. So the two-natured person, the God-man. That's what the accurate interpretation of the Bible <clears throat> leads you to believe, and that has been the faith of the heirs of the apostles, their disciples and their disciples after them. Now that is the only true Christian position about Jesus. When we come to Islam, even Islam is fragmented. The largest group are Sunni Muslims. And in Sunni Islam, they read the Quran through later Islamic tradition. So when you ask me, what is the Islamic view of Jesus? I have to distinguish between the Quranic view of Jesus and later Islamic tradition, what it says about Jesus. Right. So this track is produced by Sunni Muslims. This track is being filtered through the lens of Sunni Islam which has been shaped and fashioned by later Islamic tradition. So let's put Sunni Islam aside. Let's go to the Quranic portrait. If you read the Quran accurately without the filter of later Sunni or Shia tradition, 
Then the Quran posits a contradictory portrait of Jesus. What, what do I mean by that? There are statements in the Quran that ape what Christians believed at that time that clearly show that Jesus is divine and uncreated. But then there are statements in the Quran that relegate Jesus to the status of a human servant because the Quran is contradictory. It's not consistent. And that's to be expected because the Quran is not the word of God. And if it's not the word of God, I don't expect it to be consistent, free of contradiction. Now, let me explain what I'm not saying. I'm not saying a book that has no contradictions is from God. No, that would be erroneous, fallacious logic. And that's logic of the Quran, by the way. And you can ask me, what do I mean by that? What I'm saying is, if a book claims to be God, but contradicts itself, well, that's a sure sign. Can't be from God unless God is in the business of contradicting himself. So the Quran is not the word of God. It is an imperfect, fallible book inspired by Satan to deceive people from the true Christ, the true God, the true spirit, the true gospel. So it should be expected that whoever composed the Quran, Muhammad or someone else, is trying to entice Christians to believe in him. So he's going to affirm enough things that Christians believe in order to dupe them into thinking that he honors Jesus, but then take those truths of Christian faith and then mix them in with lies and distortion and falsehood so that he reels you in with enough truth, but then damns you with the falsehood. Now, with that said, the Quran says that Jesus is the word of Allah who came down as a spirit from Allah to enter Mary to become flesh. That's in chapter 4, verse 171 of the Quran. So notice the Quran is aping what we call Yohanin or Yohanain Christology, the teaching of the Gospel of John, the teaching of 1 John, and the teaching of Revelation that Jesus is the Word of God who came to become flesh from Mary. That means when he was there with God as God's Word, he didn't have flesh. And that's true. Because where did he get his flesh from? From his blessed mother. That means he would have existed as spirit. And that's exactly what Jesus says in John 4, 24. God's nature is spirit. And if Jesus existed with the Father as his word, who's eternal, that means he existed as God in nature. And his nature, being that of God, means he was spirit who came down to become flesh. And that's exactly chapter 4, verse 171 on the Quran. A passage that's supposedly rebuking Christians for exaggerating their love and devotion mm -hmm. for Jesus, but which says things that agrees with John's gospel. In fact, brother, if you have it up, bring up 4171 so okay. we can look at it. This is it in Arabic. Uh, you want it in English? Yeah, if you can get it. It's a better than me reading it. They can see with their own eyes because you're able to put it up on screen. I got to learn how to do that. Okay. Let me just get the... Uh, okay, here's the English translation. Okay. The... Uh, I got to share the screen here. Okay. Okay, here's the English translations. Sorry. Yes, yeah, Sahih International is garbage. Don't even read it. You can read Yusuf Ali or Pickthaw. Okay, here's Pickthaw. Oh, people of the scripture, do not exaggerate in your religion, nor utter aught concerning Allah, save the truth. The Messiah, Jesus, son of Mary, was only a messenger of Allah, and his word, which he conveyed unto Mary, and a spirit from him. Now you notice, know? yeah, now just stop there real quickly say notice. Here we're told, do not exaggerate in what we say about Jesus. Say that he is the Messiah, the son of Mary. Okay, well, I know he's the son of Mary because he was born of the Virgin, which the Quran confirms. He is the Messiah, the apostle of Allah, which as Christians you should affirm because in Hebrews 3 verse 1, you can write it down. Hebrews 3 verse 1, it says, Jesus is the apostle and high priest of our confession. So Jesus is the apostle of God the Father. He is the Messiah. He is the son of Mary because no human father sired him. But then it says, and his word, kalimatuhu, Allah's word, which he cast down to Mary, and he knows Arabic, will confirm what I'm about to say. Al -qaha Al -qaha. Al -qaha. Yes. He cast okay. it. He, like, al -qa is like the word to throw, like you throw a ball. Throw throw down. Yeah. Okay, and then it says, 
Ruchen minhu, and a spirit from him. Notice it says that Jesus was cast down from Allah, and when he came down from Allah to Mary, he came down as a spirit. Which part of that statement would any Christian deny? In fact, these were the verses that the Christians use against Muhammad, the Christians from Najran. You can read any commentator, such as Tafsir ibn Kathir, read his exposition of chapter 3 of the Quran, verse 7. He says that there are ambiguous, unclear passages that those who are perverted in heart, who have a perverse heart, will use. And then he gives the example of the Christians from Najran. The These were Arabic-speaking Christians, most likely Arabic Christians, who went to Muhammad Medina to have a debate with him about Jesus because Muhammad threatened to come and attack them if they didn't pay jizya or convert. And they said, you admit Jesus is God. How so? Don't you call him Kalimat Allah, Ruh Allah, the word of Allah and the spirit of Allah? Right there, you just proved the Trinity. How does that prove the Trinity? Well, if God's word is eternal, uncreated, and you admit Jesus is God's word, then Jesus is eternal, uncreated. Here, Notice how it works out logically. The word of God is uncreated because God has always existed with his word. There's never been a time in which God was devoid of his word. To say that God exists at a time without his word means he's imperfect. He was mute and had to acquire his speech or his word. Blasphemy. So if the word of God has always existed with God, it's uncreated. Then you tell me Jesus is word of God. Therefore, the conclusion, Jesus is uncreated. And if he's uncreated, he must be God because only God is uncreated. Wow. That's that's the first point. Secondly, to, to prove that Jesus existed before he became a man, Notice Muhammad says, the word that came down to Mary. Well, he can't come down from Allah into Mary if he wasn't already up there with Allah before he came down. Right? Wow. But if he was already there with Allah above the seven heavens and only became man, flesh and blood man from Mary, that means when he was there with Allah, he couldn't have been flesh. Well, if he couldn't be flesh, what he'd be? Well, the Quran tells you, a spirit from him. Spirit. So the Quran is affirming Jesus existed there with Allah as a spirit who didn't have flesh. So he came down into Mary to become flesh. That's John 1. <laughs> wow. So right there, the Quran confirms the eternal divine nature of Jesus and his human nature. It's confirming that Jesus is eternal who became flesh. Yeah. So, go ahead. You know, Sam, I, I I don't want to go off subject except that I, I see a good opportunity here maybe to show the Muslims that they already have this concept in their belief about the eternality of the Quran. Yeah, they do. The, the, when you say Muslim, again, see, you and I, because we're so familiar with Sunni Muslims, that when we talk about Muslims, what you and I have in mind are Sunni Muslims. Okay. Now, the Shia do not believe the Quran is the uncreated speech of Allah. They have been influenced by this early heretic. Well, they were not, they're considered heretics now, the Mutazilites. Yeah. Mutazilites. These were rationalists who were influenced by Greek philosophy and logic. But anyway, the Sunni Muslims, you can't be a Sunni Muslim if you say the Quran is created, what they say, makhluq. Now, you know Arabic. What does makhluk? It comes from the verb. Interestingly, we had a session on my channel, uh, having fun with chronic words. It comes from the word, you know, the same root from khalaqa. So yeah. what's makhluk, brother? If I say makhluk, what did I just say? Created. And they say, if you say the Quran is makhluk, mm -hmm. you are a kafir. <laughs> you are an unbeliever. You're a disbeliever. That's Sunni Islam. You cannot say the Quran is created. The Quran is is kalam Allah, kalam, speech of Allah, word of Allah, and Allah's speech is uncreated because it's one of his attributes. So the Quran is uncreated, right? So now you have the Quran that's uncreated, but the Quran is also a kitab, a book. Mm -hmm. It says, we sent down to you, O Muhammad, the book. Here, go to, if you want, you don't need this verse anymore. If you can go to chapter 5, verse 48 of the Quran, Surat Al-Ma'idah. The table spread and read 48. What is the Quran? What was given to Muhammad? Okay. I'm going to look it up, but I, ju I just want to say just really, uh, really quickly that when we were at Balboa Park a few weeks ago, 
that I was talking to some of the Muslims there, uh, the sheikhs there, or wannabe sheikhs, and uh, and they uh, and the guy and told said exactly that. He says the Quran is eternal because the word of God always existed. It's and he even did this with his with his hand, saying the words of God are eternal, like God is eternal. So exactly, you know, he's a Sunni Muslim. He's Sunni. You can't deny it. Yeah. So, but if you go to 548, the Quran is not just the speech of Allah. It's a book. That's why the Quran is right. called Kitab. Yes. In 548. What? what did Allah give to Muhammad, supposedly? In Anzalna ilayk il kitab ibil haq. We sent down, yeah. and here, we sent down the book in truth. So, the Muslims will tell you the Quran is a speech uncreated, but it's also a book. But yes. the book is material physical tangible part of creation part of time space and place so that part of the quran is not uncreated and they'd admit they'll say the ink in which it's written the pages that contain it and the mouse that recite it they're all created but hold on if the quran is a book because notice the quran is not the quran unless it's a book we sent down the book okay then that means one essential part of the Quran is that it is physical, material, part of creation, part of time, space, and place. Because a book is physical, it's material. And it's included in creation. It occupies space and time. Well, that means there's a part of the Quran that's created. So the Quran has two natures, just like Jesus does. That's hmm. eternal in one sense, but created in another sense. Hmm. And the created part of the Quran can be burned, can be destroyed, can be desecrated. But the Quran as speech is ever living. Mm. Likewise, Jesus's physical body could be killed, buried, and yet that person, Jesus, that person who is the Word, is ever living. You see? Right. They so see what we believe about Jesus, they believe about the Quran. Yeah. So if I tell the Muslim. So if I burn the Quran like Uthman did, did I destroy the Quran? They'll say no, because the Quran as speech is indestructible. The physical part can be destroyed. Similarly, when a Muslim tells me, well, how can Jesus be God if he died? Well, because the physical body died, but that person is ever living and cannot cease to be. Wow. Wow. What's the problem? What's the problem? So yeah. our view of Jesus is the Sunni view of the Quran. And Muslims and scholars of Islam are not Muslims admit this. I have an article where I quote scholars of Islam and Muslims saying, the Sunni view of the Quran is identical to the Christian view of the Logos, that Jesus is the eternal word, became flesh. And the Sunni view is similar in that it says the eternal word didn't become flesh, became a book. But what we say about Jesus, they say about the Quran. Now, let me take the analogy further and blow you away. I have an article on this too. Tell I'm us, to... tell us where that article is. Yeah, I'm going to get it for you in a minute. Okay. Because, uh, let me finish the point, it's all, guys, it's make sure you get this article, you guys, because this yes. is a powerful tool to use against one of the strongest arguments that Muslims bring. Yeah. So please get this article. Yeah, a, I have a couple of them. So be patient with me, guys, because like, like I said, I too have to search for my articles because on answeringislam.info, I have about 200 articles. And on my blog, I have, I think, I'm now over 100 articles, I think. And, and when I keep saying I'm an article, again, please don't misunderstand. I'm not saying, look, look at me. I'll no, I'm saying... Go read the material. Go get these citations. Go memorize these points. Make it part of you and accurately understand the points and accurately represent them and <clears throat> spread them. Because if there are more of us who learn these arguments, that means more soldiers destroying Islam and taking Muslims captive for Jesus. Can, Can I ask you this question from Ali? Well, yeah, yeah. He says, Shamonian, does the Quran literally say Isa is Kalam Allah? Or is yeah. the Quran the only Kalam? This is one of my regulars, and he hurt me with this question. He's one of my regulars who's mm -hmm. a supporter of my love. But by this question, he broke my heart because I failed him as a teacher. Can I write a? Can I sing a song about this? Oh, please, please about sing a song because I, I got lots of songs about broken hearts. So please sing, them. and I'm, my heart's broken for many reasons because I'm still single like you. But go ahead. I'm here without you, baby. Okay. Anyway, that's all. You know, music is haram. Oh, sorry, sorry, sorry. It's okay. You don't ever desecrate Islam by singing when we're talking about Islam. Stop okay. for a while. I'll go do. I'll go do. Uh, I'll go do wudu and do seven hit. 
I'm just kidding. Yeah. Make sure you snort water in and out of your nose and get Satan out because he's still there. All right, but now let me answer the question. No, we didn't say that the Quran says Jesus is Kalam Allah. No, he's not Kalam Allah. He's Kalimat Allah. Mm -hmm. Kalimat Allah. The could Quran. I, could I just say one thing here? Yeah. Yes. Just but let, me just say the verses. let me just say the verses, though. Okay. The, the Quran three times calls Jesus Kalimat Allah. Chapter 4, verse 171, it says, Kalimatuhu, his okay. kalimat. And then in chapter 3, verse 39, it says, Yahya, John, confirms a word from Allah, kalimat min Allah, it's kalimat. And then in 345, chapter 3, verse 45, the angels tell Mary, we are giving you good tidings, glad tidings of a word from him, kalimat minhu, Ismuhu, whose name is Jesus the Messiah, the son of Mary. So these three verses, 4171, 339, and 345, Jesus is kalimat, not kalam. But go ahead, brother, before I take the next well, one. See, that's what I was I was gonna say about those other two verses where it says, you know, it says, Allah be bashrik bikilme minnu, the word from him, Ismu Isa al Messiah. You know, and that's the one three forty nine, and and then you, but those are. I just wanted to make sure that that that. But you you went ahead and, and mentioned that, so go yeah. ahead. Now, Sunni Islam calls the Quran Kalam Allah, Kalam speech. Now they're related words because mm -hmm. they would come from the same root, Kalimat Kalam. They're related, speech or word, but we want to be accurate in representing the terms that Muslims use, right? Now, with that said, you will not find here, and I'm going to shock Muslims here. I may even shock my brother here. There's not a single verse in the entire Quran where the Quran is said to be Kalam Allah, where it says the Quran is the word of Allah. Nowhere in the Quran. Oh. Did you know that? No. There's not a single verse that says the Quran is the word of Allah. Quran, Kalam Allah. Nowhere is the Quran called the word of Allah. Wow. I'm not exaggerating. In fact, please, Muslims, I hope you hear me, hear this and prove me wrong. Show me where the Quran calls itself the word of Allah, where it says the Quran is the word of Allah, or this book, the Quran, is the word of Allah. It's not there. You won't find it. So I just want to be clear on that one. Now, the point being, again, what Steve wanted me to highlight, Sunni Islam has its own trinity. In fact, Sunni Islam has more than a trinity because if my interpretation of 4171 is right, Allah, Jesus, and the Quran, all three are uncreated. Since Jesus is not the Quran, yet they're both said to be the word speech of Allah, and Allah's word and speech are uncreated, that means Allah, Jesus, and the Quran must be uncreated. But then you add the Ruh, the Spirit of Allah. And in the Quran, we've done topics on this. We can come back and do it again if you want on your show. Or we can do it on mine. You can upload it. But whatever. Where the Ruh, the Spirit, nowhere in the Quran does it say the Spirit is Gabriel. Nowhere in the Quran. And this is what I meant by saying distinguish between what later theology says and what the Quran says. What the Quran says and what Muslim scholars say are not the same. Islamic theology will tell you the spirit is Gabriel. The Quran says, no way, Jose. Nowhere is the spirit said to be Gabriel. Nowhere is the spirit said to be an angel. Nowhere does the Quran say angels are spirits. Nowhere does it say Gabriel is a spirit. Nowhere in the Quran. Nowhere. Let me say it again. Nowhere in the Quran. What the Quran says about the spirit is that the spirit creates, gives life, come down, comes down with the angels, is an apostle of Allah who can appear as a man and speak and be spoken to. So, Allah, Jesus, Quran, Spirit, all four are divine and uncreated. But then if we add what Sunni traditions say about the Quran, that the Quran comes to life. It will appear as a pale man on the day of judgment. And chapters of the Quran, like chapter 2 and chapter 3, will appear in visible shape as flocks of birds and spread their wings to cover those that recited it and will fight for them and dispute with Allah on their behalf. 
getting Allah to forgive those that used to recite them, making Allah forgive them. Now you got not just four, but now you have each chapter of the Quran, each verse of the Quran <clears throat> being depicted as living, conscious, active persons or beings that can actually speak with Allah, argue with Allah to defend those that recite the Quran. That means now if you have 114 chapters of the Quran and about 6,000 verses, and each of those verses <clears throat> can come to light because there's a hadith that says there are 30 verses of the Quran that will intercede for those that recite it. That means even the verses recite, even the verses speak. That means Allah is made up of himself, Jesus, the Spirit, 114 chapters that come alive and appear in visible form, visible shape that speak with him. So that's 117 divine persons or divine beings. But if we then assume that each verse is a living being, that means Allah is made up of over 6,000 living divine persons, divine beings. Allah yustur. Allah yustur. <laughs> so now, but not to forget the point we're getting at. The Quran does say Jesus is eternal, uncreated. He also creates and gives life, breathes out life in the same way that Allah does. Like yeah. in chapter 3, verse 49, chapter 5, verse 110, Jesus creates from clay a bird, breathes into the bird, and the bird becomes a living being, a living soul, comes to life. Exactly the way Allah created Adam. Allah created Adam from clay, breathed into him the spirit, and animated Adam. So Jesus creates exactly like Allah. See, these are the things that show the Quran makes Jesus divine, truly divine, fully God, who became flesh, the eternal word of God. So there's a distinction. He's not Allah, but he's not other than Allah. Because he's Allah's word, who does what only Allah can, create and give life. And he was there with Allah as spirit, who came down to become flesh from the virgin. But then you have st statements like 575. Can you go to 575? Let's see. 575, okay. I like this better than the other ones, man. This is a really easy uh, Quran here to change. Yeah, yeah. Use Pictal. He's, for the most part, more accurate. Okay. The Messiah, the son of Mary, was no other than a messenger. Messengers, the like of whom, had passed away before him. Now, before you move on, notice he's nothing more than a messenger. See the contradiction? Yes. But how can he be nothing more than a messenger if he is the word of God that was with God, who came down as spirit to become flesh, who creates from clay and breathes life into that clay in the same way that Allah creates and breathes life. And he's sinless. And then Allah took him to dwell with him physically, bodily, above the seven heavens with Allah on the throne, according to chapter 3, verse 55 of the Quran, and chapter 4, verse 158, so that Jesus has been alive physically, bodily, with Allah above creation for 2,000 years. And he's no more than a messenger? Mm. You know... Uh... <laughs> Can you, you know, show me a messenger that's like that? You know, uh, the other day when we were with Al Fadi and you brought this up, and I just, I would like to just kind of throw this in real quickly just because uh, uh, of the way that you responded to it. And that is, uh, and I did a video because I, 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 I plagiarized what you said. And, you know, that it shows the Quran shows that God created and breathed into, and then it shows Jesus created. Khalak unafakh, khalak unafakh, breathe and, and created and breathe. And then it shows that the Holy Spirit does the same thing, the Spirit. Yeah. Could you tell us about just that real quickly about that, the Spirit doing that? Yeah, well, it depends on how you translate the preposition, right? In 6612, it says, Mary, the daughter of Imran, who guarded her farj, her private part. And then we breathe into it. Now, the preposition it's normally translated of our spirit, meaning the breathe out the spirit. But then you have those that say it can be rendered breathe into her private part through our spirit. So it comes down to the use of the preposition. Should you translate it of our spirit or through our spirit? Look it up 6612 and give us the Arabic real quick so people understand what we're talking about. Yeah, that's, you know what? The word in Arabic for through is khilal. Yeah. yeah, but they say 
they say uh, that the preposition used here can mean of, through, from, because words can have uh, what they call a broad, broad semantic range, and it's the context that will give you the precise meaning of a word or preposition or a verb, etc. Okay. Um, it's a, in Arabic. It says Miriam bint Amran alati ahsanat farjaha, fanafakhna fihi min ruhina. So min. Yeah, we we breathed into it of our spirit. So you now know, you translated of. Some will say that min can also be from, or like here ruhin minhu, from him minhu, and they'll say it can also mean through. They say us. that that preposition. Oh, oh, oh. Say it again. From. min. You know what though, nafakh. I don't think that with the verb fanafakhna we breathed that that would work. You know, you really say, well, it works if you well I'll tell you how they're going to tell you. It works if you understand that he's breathing through an agent, instrumentality, meaning what is the instrument that Allah is using to breathe through the spirit. That's why it comes down to how to render the preposition Min. It's just like the conjunction wa. Sometimes wa can mean and or it can mean or as far as Quranic logic is concerned. What do I mean? And I'm not trying to teach Arabic. I'm, 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 you're the Arab guy speak Arabic. But for example, in Surah Nisa, chapter 4, verse 3, it says, Marry woman, two or three or four, if you can be fair. But you know that the word or is wa, the conjunction. So literally, it's Mary two and three and four. Oh, I see. I see what right? you're saying. <laughs> that, you know, that reminds me of, is it, dude, I don't want to get, well, you know, but it is relevant. It is relevant. It is relevant just because, you know, I was telling you the other day about how some of the sheikhs, because they don't want to say that Jesus died and was taken up, they're saying, what they're saying is that it's the opposite. That, that Jesus was raised up and he's going to yeah. come back and die. It really means in the Rafa al And so yeah. the and their explanation is that the wow is that the wow in there doesn't imply uh, chronology like this happened and then this happened. And so that because it doesn't imply chronology, then it could just be, mean the opposite. And so <laughs> anyway, so but. You know, that they play with that wow a yeah lot. that's what i'm saying so this is the point but there are times where words can legitimately have a different meaning because that's how words function and i'm not trying to get into grammar here i'm just trying to say that this yeah. argument of breathing through the spirit is what would make your case that it's the spirit that's breathing life as opposed to allah breathing out the spirit to give life so if you want to say breathe of our spirit, it's not the spirit who's breathing life. It is Allah sending the spirit, breathing out the spirit to give life. Yeah. So the through actually makes your point that it's Allah breathing through the spirit, meaning that the spirit with Allah is breathing life. So if you want to go with of, the spirit doesn't breathe. It's the spirit that's being breathed out. But either interpretation, whether... It's the spirit that's being breathed out or the spirit is breathing with Allah. The point still is the same. The spirit is giving life because why is Allah breathing out the spirit? Because yeah. that is metaphorical language stolen from the Bible that refers to God sending forth the spirit so that the spirit will now give life to creation. Because when we think of breath, we think of life. You don't breathe, you die. You breathe, you live. So God is not a physical being who has physical breath. So why do we speak of the breath of God? Because the Quran is simply stealing this from the Bible. Mm -hmm. It's because God is trying to give us creatures an idea of how he gives life. He gives life by his breath because mm -hmm. you need to breathe to live. Mm -hmm. But it's the breath of God that gives life to everything. Well, God is not a physical being. Does he have physical breath? No. The breath of God is the Holy Spirit who's being called breath mm -hmm. because it's the spirit that God uses to give life. All right. Thank you. Sorry for going off chat track there. No. If you want to get back to no, where you get to the point, what I'm saying is yeah. 
even this interpretation of breathe out the spirit or breathe through the spirit, the point is still the same. Mm -hmm. The spirit is used by God to create and give life because he's creator and life giver. You still end up at the same point. Yeah. The spirit creates and gives life. Jesus creates and gives life. Allah creates and gives life. Interestingly, when it says Jesus breathed into that bird and became a living soul, if we now connect it with 6612 and other verses where Allah breathes the spirit into something to cause that thing to come to life, that means Jesus was breathing out the spirit into that clay bird, which means Jesus walked around with the very spirit indwelling him like Allah possesses it. Mm -hmm. Wow. Right? Yeah. And and I and if I could just say make it make it another headache here. But if you want to say that that's Jibril, then Jibril also has the ability to breathe that out. Ah, you got it. So now let's say it's Gabriel. You just made Gabriel a creator and life giver with Allah and Jesus. And if you want to then translate the preposition, men, through the spirit, because again, don't take my word for it, Steve. Look at Ibn Kithir and others. When they interpret that passage, they say that we breathe min ruhina or through our spirit. Then they say, Gabriel came and breathed into the kamis of Mary. And that breath entered her body, caused her to get pregnant, right? So who did the breathing, according to the commentators? Jibril. <laughs> so but hold on. If Jibril is breathing into Mary, but the Quran says Allah is the one who breathed, you just made Gabriel a member of Allah, and one of those who breathed out because it says we breathe. But then it says in the commentators, Gabriel actually breathed. So who breathed? Gabriel or Allah? Gabriel with Allah because according to the commentators, breathe. Breathe. Gabriel, yes. <laughs> so either it's we breathe of our spirit. And that means Gabriel breathed out the spirit because the commentators say Gabriel did it or he breathed through the spirit. So we use the spirit to breathe life. So the spirit, when we breathe, it breathed. And therefore the commentators say, said Gabriel breathed, which again, you end up with Allah creating through Gabriel as his agent, making Gabriel a co-creator with Allah. <laughs> wow. It's like, it, it's, the easiest thing is to just say it clearly the way it says it, you know, uh, just all it says, you know, I breathed into her, you know, as of our spirit. Yeah. And the, yeah, but even then the commentators say it was Gabriel who did the breathing. So if we go with the Quran, let's go to Quran that says Allah breathed into her of our spirit. That means he breathed out the spirit. But then the commentator said, Gabriel breathed out the spirit. So then who is the one saying, we breathe our spirit into her? Who's okay. the one saying that? Uh, God is. Yeah. No, you're not getting it. It's Allah and Gabriel. That's why it's plural. Oh, oh, nafakhna, fanafakh, we breathe, yes. Okay, because follow me again. If you get this point, you got another video, another show you to do. If Allah is the one who does the breathing and he's breathing out the spirit. So what he's breathing is the spirit. He's breathing out the spirit. But then the commentators say, Gabriel breathe. That means Gabriel must be one of those speaking in that verse. We, so it's oh. Allah and Gabriel speaking, saying we, Allah and Gabriel, I and Gabriel breathe out the spirit. So the spirit comes out of me and Gabriel. Oh. Because wow. if you look at the Kathir, he says the one who breathed was Gabriel. Wow. So if Gabriel breathed, but the Quran saying that it's this being who speaks of himself in the plural that breathed, we breathe. That means the we is Allah and Gabriel. Gabriel and Allah are the we because together they breathe out the spirit. Mm. Wow. You get it now? Yes. And, you know, it, it just makes me think of what the king of Saudi Arabia or the crown prince of Saudi Arabia said. One of the things he said is we don't need to just rely on these ancient scholars. In Thank Arabic, it says, 
fatahna babil ijtihad that means we are now open to start thinking for ourselves instead of just saying what people told us in the past and yeah. i'm thinking if they look at this without all the commentaries <laughs> i think it says i think it says one thing that people that is clear but then when you add the commentaries and which is what they always do it kind of brings it back to what their doctrine is rather than what it seems to clearly say confirms what i said difference between yeah. later islamic theology later. and what the yeah. Christ, right yes and wow. so but notice how later islamic theology ends up making gabriel one of the divine speakers in the quran because he's part of the we that speaks wow <laughs> See, in other words, later Muslim commentators were not thinking through the implication of their interpretation. They yes. didn't understand that if we say Gabriel breathed the spirit into Mary, then we just screwed everything up. We just destroyed Tawheed because that means Gabriel is one of the speakers who said, we breathe our spirit. Yes. So that now the plural is Allah and Gabriel because they're partners. Oh, wow. <laughs> now, you want me to prove to you from the Quran that the we includes Gabriel as one of the speakers, which is why the Quran uses the plural we and us and our? You want me to give you proof for that? Yeah. yeah. Go to chapter 19. I want you to read 63 and 64. 1963. Oh, I was born in 1963. Well, that's why 64 was better. Oh, dude. <laughs> 1963. Why did you say that? Because it just was a good setup, man. I'm sorry. You're going to hear my feelings. <sighs> my emotions. You don't care about my emotions. That's what I think. That's what I feel sometimes. Well, okay. I mean, you're always hurting me because, you know, if your face is not hurting you, it's killing me. So, but anyway, but in 1963, just read verse 63 first. Watch what happens. Okay. That is paradise, which we give as inheritance to those of our servants who were fearing of Allah. Okay, now who's notice who's speaking? That is paradise, which we give unto our servants. So the we and the are must be God, right? Yes. Read it one more time slowly so people can understand where I'm going with this. That is paradise, which we give as an inheritance to those of our servants who were fearing of Allah. There is no way a Muslim would deny that the speaker is Allah because we are the servants of Allah alone. Uh -huh. And it is Allah who grants people paradise, right? Right. But now read 64. Gabriel said, and we... Now notice the word Gabriel is not in brackets. I mean, yeah. it's not. It's in parentheses. It's not in the Arabic, right? Uh-huh. Uh, and we angels descend not except by the order of your. Is the word angels in the Arabic? Uh, let's see. Be Amr Rabbak Ma Netnezel. No, it doesn't even okay. say. The well, word now of. ignore the word angels that was added in parentheses and Gabriel that was added in brackets by Sai uh, International. Just read it as it is without the word angels because you read it. Okay. And okay. And we descend not except by the order of your Lord. Who's speaking? Who's speaking? Who's the we? Oh, God? I mean, I don't, the spirit, right? The spirit of God? Say, no, think about it. You're not following context. You were just told who the we are in 63. Oh. You got. Oh. You got confused because of what the translators did. Yeah, because it's separated. Okay. Not only separated, they added words and brackets to destroy the flow. Oh, Who's the we that was speaking in 63? God Allah. But then where does it change? Where does speakers change? It's the same speaker in 63 and 64. <laughs> Wow. I don't think you caught it. Did you catch it or no? 
you know, let, let me uh, let me read the whole thing in English. Just because, yeah, the reason uh, why you're okay. confused is because two things. The translators added words in 64, yeah. and instead of reading two verses at a time, you're reading one verse, and then you're having to switch to the next verse. Let me give you a better browser. I want you to repent of your idolatry of this browser. Here's our browser that's part of Answering Islam. Start using this one. Okay, you see the link I gave you? Click on it um, because you said this. This is ours. This belongs to our website, Answering Islam. I sent it to you in private chat. Okay. Okay. Okay, click on it, open up the screen, because I'm going to show you how to use this one. This is much better. Much easier. You can read more verses together instead of having to click on one verse and the next verse. Okay, well, the one that – oh, I see, the second one here. Yeah. Um, You know what? It's not opening. It better open or I'm going to bust this website. It should open. Hold on. Here, this no. one. This is this – is, here's the right link. The right link. Here it is. Okay. This one. Sorry. Here you go. Click on this one. Okay. Oh, okay. All right. Let me go. Now, when you open it up, I'm going to show you how to use this. It's it's an amazing resource. It's part of our website. When you click it, I'm going to show you. This belongs to Answering Islam, guys. This is part of our website. Yochan Katz started it. Okay, now. Now, what you do is click on Arberry. We're going to stick with Arberry. Click on Arberry and then Arabic transliteration. And click Arabic. on Arabic transliteration. Okay. Now, put in 19 colon... 19 colon 63 uh -huh. 63 64 63 64 it's got to be a dash okay. not a hyphen and then press submit submit okay submit yeah there you okay. go see how much easier oh okay. yeah it gives you the more than one verse together for continuity now may, you may have to enlarge the screen for others to see i don't think they can see it it's very small can you enlarge it or no? Uh, isn't it larger? Well, I mean, it looks like it's a distant away, but as long as you can read it, then it doesn't matter yeah. really. But oh, now, okay, now, yeah, beautiful, beautiful. <laughs> now it's perfect. Now Sam, read. Yeah. Someone called you a sinner. Well, sinner saved by grace. Come on now. It says Sam the sinner sent the wrong link. That's why I need salvation. Yes. Now, guys, we're well, going to get to the point. Okay. Now, here's what I want Steve and everyone else to do. You can see it. Notice the plural, we, our. See if there's any change in the speaker. This is literally That's the literal right. translation of the Arabic. Keep reading. Go now. Start at 16 and read to 64. That is paradise, which we shall give as inheritance to those of our servants who are God-fearing. Now, before you move on, before you move on, we shall give an inheritance to our servants who are God-fearing, we come not down. Same speaker, mm. right? Mm. Wow, yes. Wow. But how can 64, the same speaker who said, they are our servants, we give them paradise as inheritance, then say, we come not down, save at the commandment of thy Lord. I thought that we was Allah. Why is Allah speaking in the plural and saying, we only come down when your Lord orders us. Wow. This really opens a, a can of worms if, if you don't have the Trinity. <laughs> Just kidding. You get it? Wow. Notice there's no change. The we and the hour is the same group. In 63, the we and the hour must be Allah because only Allah grants paradise. And Muslims are only the servants of Allah, not angels. But then the we goes on to say, we come not down, save at the commandment of thy Lord. To him belongs all that is before us, all that is behind us, and all between that. How can the we and the us and the our, who supposedly Allah, speak of Muhammad's Lord, who then is before them, behind them, and all around? All that is before us. Wow. That's why the Muslim translations in 64 added the word Gabriel or angels because they knew there's a problem if they don't add words to the text so you don't think that the same group in 63 is speaking in 64 when in reality it is. There's no change in the speaker. It's the same we and our in 63 that's speaking in 64. Wow. 
So now let's go with their interpretation. Well, that's the angels, including Gabriel. Well, that means the we and the us and the our does include Gabriel because it is Gabriel here who's speaking in the plural on behalf of the angels whom Allah sends down. But then Gabriel and the angels are claiming to do things that only Allah can do, give paradise. And then Gabriel and the angels are saying Muslims are their servants. Our servants who are God. <laughs> Wow. So you see where I'm going with this? That the plural is used because it's Allah and Gabriel speaking as a unit. So when Allah breathes, Gabriel breathes. When Allah gives paradise, Gabriel gives paradise. If you are the slave of Allah, you're the slave of, slave of Gabriel. You can't escape it. Wow. Is it sinking in, brother? Yeah, I tell, well, you know what? It's like, uh, you know, I kind of got an idea, and I'll just throw it out because it just, you know, it's like David Wood. Sometimes he says he gets his crazy ideas while he's talking, and he just throws it out because he'll forget it if he doesn't say it. So I'm gonna, just going to throw this out uh, so I don't forget it when I say it. Uh, 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 and that is that um, that what uh, a lot of what I'm seeing seems to me that Muhammad heard things from the so-called Christians, okay? But then he heard things from the Jews against the Christians. And it seems like there was this battle between what the Christians said and what the Jews said about what the Christians said. And, and I'm wondering if that's some of what we're seeing here in the Quran with, the, uh, with some of the stuff that's here. If yeah. It was his confusion about what he's hearing from the so-called people of the book in you know in his mind so now anyway, let me throw hadavrim hadavrim 68 because he thinks he's intelligent and he thinks he's smart and he knows the quran and he's challenging me because he's one of these fake torah observers uh let me now embarrass you for thinking you're intelligent i want you to show me a single verse in the quran where it says gabriel is an angel so that the example you gave that Allah supposedly speaks and says we to angels, that means the we does not include angels. Now, that doesn't refute the point that Gabriel is still part of the we. <clears throat> and beyond that, show me in the Quran where Gabriel said to be an angel. See, this is what happens when these people wax eloquent and they try to impress me because they want me to know that they are reading the Quran too. So here's my challenge to this guy. Show He's me... I can't show that Jibril is an angel. He said that, right? Yeah. Good. So do yourself a favor, Hadavarim. Sit back, enjoy the ride. Talk less because the more you open your mouth, the more you convince us you're a fool and not as intelligent as you think. So that's that's good. Glad. Glad you humbled yourself. Humble yourself, you'll be exalted. Exalt yourself, you'll be humbled, all right. Glory to Jesus Christ. Yeah, there's nowhere in the Quran where Gabriel said to be an angel. In fact, if you read the Quran, you don't know who Gabriel is. Definitely he's not the spirit, but let me prove what I mean. People are thinking, what do you mean? Go to chapter 2, verse 98 of the Quran, brother. Two. This is in the this two. Oh, dude. I have to go back to that thing there. You got to just backtrack. Use the arrow to go back. Yeah. Okay. So, okay. It's Arbery in Arabic transliteration, yeah. 298. But you can use any translation you want, but Arbery is more accurate. Than the rest because he doesn't insert these parenthetical comments or comments in brackets okay okay let me just open share it yeah okay yeah, all you do is hit the arrow to go back oops 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 sorry wrong one no really it's it's uh, because it's an idol you're addicted to it repent man stop I with that Stop with that, that Muslim browser, dude. It's like you can't live without it. You even dream this Muslim browser. But I can definitely live without your singing anymore. You know okay. what? I want to take what they just said yeah. and said words. You said I can't. I want to make it plural and say we can live without your singing. It's like not uh -huh. just I. But we, and I'm not trying to say the royal we, but I mean as humanity. <laughs> now, you, I want you to pay attention to Steve. This is where Muslims are going to hate you because they can't prove a lot 
of their theology from the Quran alone. Notice this, read for me, 298 slowly. Whoever is an enemy to God and his angels and his messengers and Gabriel and Michael, mashallah, surely God is an enemy to the unbelievers. Now here's why this passage is confusing. Just like God is not an angel, angels are not the messengers. They're distinct, right? God is a thing from angels. Angels things from messengers. Then where does that leave Gabriel and Michael? There's something else. <laughs> are they the angels? How do you know? Because they're distinguished from angels. Are they messengers? How do you know? They're distinguished from messengers. So what exactly are Gabriel and Michael? What are they? Are they jinn? Because remember, there's another class, right? The jinn, right? Jinn, yes. Genies. How do you know they're not genies? Because in chapter 18, verse 50, Iblis, Satan, is said to be a genie, right? Yes. So if angels and messengers and God are all distinct, they're not the same. You just proved that Gabriel Michael is also distinct from messengers, distinct from angels, distinct from God. So that only leaves with one category, genies. Wow. <laughs> Let me give you another one. Go to 66, verse 4 of the Quran. Surat al-Tahirim. 66, 4? Yes, yeah, chapter 66, verse 4. Okay. All right. okay. You see, the Quran is a nightmare. If you guys learn these arguments, these are all of my articles in my sessions, I promise you, you will be used by the Spirit to destroy Islam, bury this filth, expose Muhammad with the hopes that Muslims will come to Jesus and be saved. Because this is a joke. This book is a joke from the pit of hell. May the Lord Jesus save people from it. 66 verse 4. Read slowly for me, brother, and see again. If you too repent to God, yet your heart's certainly inclined. But if you support one another against him, God is his protector. And Gabriel and the righteous among the believers and after that, the angels are his supporters. I'm confused. I thought Gabriel is an angel. Why is he distinguished from the righteous believers and the angels? Oh, my goodness. I'm, I'm totally at a loss now. <laughs> so if I just go by the Quran alone, who is Gabriel? What is he? I'm not sure. Exactly. The only group not mentioned is genies, right? Yes. So that means the only option now, if you're a Quran only Muslim, is that Gabriel is a genie, like Iblis is a genie. Michael is a genie, like Iblis is a genie. You know, I'm actually massively impressed with. Uh, I I've seen this sister often on your channel and Christian Prince, but she's very knowledgeable. This Gedaliah, uh -huh. very knowledgeable sister. Sister, Lord bless you. Like Chloe Wake and other sisters, it seems like you're on fire and very knowledgeable. Your knowledge is impressive. I, I've seen her on Christian Prince in your channel. I don't know much about her, but it looks like she knows the Arabic, and she's already know what yeah. I'm about to say, and she says it. But now, and, and, I, and I praise God for all of you guys, all of you, all you sisters, but we want more of you guys doing this for the glory of Christ. And Chloe, I'll be contacting you to have you interviewed on my channel very soon, Lord willing. But for everyone else paying attention, do you see the point? What's the point? Some of you may not be getting like St. Pelagar. I want you to get this. It says Allah is Muhammad's protector and Gabriel's his protector. Well, obviously, Gabriel and Allah are not the same. And the righteous believers are his protectors. Well, obviously, the righteous believers are not Allah. They're different and they're different from Gabriel. But also the angels are his protectors. So just like a Muslim will tell you, the angels are not the righteous believers here. They're distinct. And the angels are not Allah here. They're distinct. That means the angels are not Gabriel. He's distinct from them. So what is he? He can't be Allah. He's distinct from Allah. He's not among the righteous believers. He's distinct from them. What is he? You only have one category left. Genies. Wow. You got it? Wow. You're silent, huh? <laughs> you went silent. Well, you, the thing is, is that this right here helps a lot with who came to Muhammad in the cave. You know, and <laughs> because Muhammad was confused about it, remember? He said, yeah. a jinn came to me. Yeah, 100%. Jinn. Jinn. 
right? Exactly. So nobody knows who Gabriel is if you Both just follow the him. door behind you. Is it Jibril? Yeah, that no, that was actually Mikhail, alayhi salam. <laughs> right? Mikhail. So that that's 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 it. That's wow. uh there you go. So you saw it that the we in the Quran definitely would include more than Allah. And whoever this we is, they're subject to Allah. Allah commands them, sends them down, whoever this we is. But this we does things that only God can do. This we creates, this we gives life, this we has slaves, this we grants paradise, grants salvation. And here we see that we have no idea who or what Gabriel is, who or what Michael is, because Gabriel and Michael are distinguished from angels, from believers, and from Allah. And, th and this book is supposedly a miracle. There wow. you go. Wow. Yeah, someone's saying there was a handsome chap. The one that Christian Prince is referring to is Dihya Al-Kalbi. Dihya Al-Kalbi was a companion of Muhammad. In fact, Nim Grace, Dihya Al-Kalbi was the one who took the Jewish woman, Safiya. Safiya. And then when Muhammad heard about Safiya being a high-ranking woman, because her husband was a high-ranking Jew who knew where the money was. Her husband was tortured and killed, right? Muhammad went to Dihya al-Kalbi said, here are seven slaves for Safiya, she's mine. And he took Safiya, married her, and had sex with her right after slaughtering her family. She's the one who made him dinner, right? No, that was another Jewish woman. Okay, sorry. But now the reason why I'm mentioning is because Muhammad in the Hadith say, that Gabriel looks like Dihya al Kalbi. When Gabriel appeared to him, he would appear to him. You can have it. Uh, you can appear to him. Uh, I'm sorry. When Gabriel appeared to Muhammad, he appeared with the appearance of Dihya al Kalbi. He says that Gabriel looks like Dihya al Kalbi. That's what she was referring to, or him. I don't know, Nim. Is it the male or female? I don't know. But yeah, that was it. So, brother, we answer those questions, friend. Okay. I know uh, you got stuff to do. Yes. Um, what time is it now? 2.14, oh, sir. 14, okay. Well, I got pizzas to deliver and stuff. All right. But, but uh, we'll do something else sometime this week. I'm back. We'll do stuff. Okay. Thank you so much for coming on, man. That really made it a very – you know what? I didn't have nothing today. I just wanted I, – I put that thing on because I was waiting to see if uh, – I was waiting to see if one of those guys would respond. But they didn't respond. But it was better to get you on and to be, give us some very meaty things that and, and very good tools that we can use. So glory to uh, God! And now I'll, I'll, I'll upload this to my channel so we can get more traffic and get people to come subscribe to you. Awesome! So, yeah. Okay, well, brother. Thank God. you for being a gracious host, Lord Jesus willing. I will be seeing you sometime in July because I got to come right. up for a conference. So God willing, and the Lord bless you, prosper you, provide for you. Thank you. Know, Comfort, comfort, uh, comfort you and provide your daily bread for his glory in Jesus' name. And I pray he does that for all of us in Jesus' name. Amen. Have a great night, a uh, great day. <laughs> all right. God night is for Muhammad and his jinns. <laughs> Take care, brother. God bless. All right. God bless you, man. Thanks again. All right, everybody. Well, uh, this was a real blessing, a real treat. You know, uh, <laughs> I was kind of waiting for some of the, one of those guys. I think they were both in Africa somewhere like uh, uh, that were making those nasty comments about Jesus and stuff. And so I wanted one of them to come on and debate me, but they didn't. You know, they had reasons. One wanted to sleep. I don't know what the other ones was. But instead, we got Sam Shimon and we got some very good uh Meaty uh, teachings, and also uh, we got some very good tools that we can use in witnessing to Muslims. Please, you guys, if you didn't write down notes, if you didn't get the the sites on answering Islam, because these are huge, huge issues, and you guys know this that Muslims always use, and they they deserve an answer, and there is an answer. There is an answer. So go to those sites. You know, uh, just go back and look at the, uh, uh, at the, you know, watch the video, get, not the whole thing, but just to the part where he's got the Answering Islam uh, site where those answers are, uh, specifically about Jesus, about the, 
uh, about the deity of Christ and stuff in the Quran so that you can use that uh, in witnessing to Muslims because it's going to come up. It's going to come up. And it's also, I just want to say, it's not just for witnessing to Muslims. It's also for Christians because a lot of Christians don't know, don't understand the Trinity. A lot of Christians don't understand the Trinity. I mean, I had Christians, you know what I had Christians tell me? I've had Christians tell me, oh, the Trinity is that, you know, God, like I am a father, I'm an uncle, and I'm a son. You know, I'm my son's uh, father, I'm my father's son, and I'm a, my niece's uncle. You know, I'm, and, you know, so I'm one person with three roles. That's not right. That's wrong. That's not the that's not the Trinity. And you say, oh, well, wait a minute. So you got to learn how to discuss the Trinity. Do you have to understand every detail? Of course not. We don't. We're human. We're limited. But there is enough in the Scripture to give you concrete ways to present the Trinity and to defend it against the lies. And the, you know the lies, like in the Quran, where it says that the Trinity is the mother, father, son. That's what the Quran says. So anyway, you guys, thank you so much for coming on. Thanks for being with us. And any of you who haven't done it, do it right now. Say, Jesus, help me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart. Jesus, help me. Jesus, forgive me. Jesus, come into my heart. Yusra sa'idni. Yusra samehni. Yusra udkhul albi. Yusra sa'idni. Yusra samehni. Yusra udkhul albi. He loves you. I love you. Thank you guys so much for being with me. Look forward to be uh, to being with you again soon. So uh, and uh, God bless you and have a great day. Thank you. Uh, <laughs> I hear you. I don't either. Yeah. So.